But talking about digital, I uh, passed that word to, to Carlos. Uh, um, um, you t we talk a lot of nowadays about blockchain, um, about uh, cryptocurrency, and now Facebook is launching uh, Libra. Um, microchips are becoming cheaper and cheaper that you can almost print them on, on, on goods. Uh, how is all this playing into the illicit trade? Uh, is it, uh, do you see it uh, in a positively? Or is it helping or is it helping the bad guys or the good guys? Thank you, Alvise. As yesterday was said, uh, technology can be used um, as a weapon or as a tool. You can destroy or you can construct. Um, just to give you a history on the uh, technology, what we call now blockchain, and how it can really enhance the fight against uh, illicit trade. The World Wide Web now, which is the invention that happens in Geneva, I was an expert at the United Nations when the web started in Geneva, and, and at that time it was a lot of hope as we expected the web to solve a lot of problems. Um, the web is now, uh, you have a $10 trillion economy sitting on the top of the web, uh, companies like uh, Apple, Facebook, uh, Amazon, Google, all of them have been extraordinarily efficient in monetizing the World Wide Web and, and creating a lot of wealth, but they have been extraordinarily inefficient in one specific thing, which is digital identity. The, the web is blind. The web doesn't know what it's doing. So, so you can obviously transfer good things on the web, but you can also transfer very bad things. So what has happened is that illicit trade, and, and, and not only illicit trade, but also issues related to uh, the underground economy, are using uh, the web in an extraordinarily efficient way to do bad things. So, um, it, and, and the reason is that the people that they are trying, and there has been some very good companies, LVMH, and, and we have been helping many companies in Wiseki, to, to improve their uh, defense system, these companies are working in silos. Um, and, and when you are dealing with uh, a $2.4 trillion problem, which is the illicit trade problem, you cannot work in silos. So, so you have to build platforms. And, and the platform is something that uh, stakeholders can, through one entry point, access endless amount of data, which is not the case now. If, if, if a government or a private sector company wants to investigate illicit trade issues, where do they go? They go to a database. Those databases are not available to them. They have to negotiate uh, credentials to access the database. So um, this has been extraordinarily inefficient. That's why Interpol and many of the uh, police uh, organizations around the world are totally in a situation of uh, the need to centralize data. But data is very difficult to centralize because there are you know, commercial issues on data, ownership, uh, intellectual property issues. So in the last five years, a new technology has arrived with the name blockchain, which could be the beginning of solving the problem. Although I always say, uh, and I have been working on blockchain from the beginning, uh, blockchain is only one of the components, not the only one. But we are creating in, in security and cyber security and technology a convergence historic point where what we call deep tech, deep technologies are converging. So you have artificial intelligence, you have blockchain, you have digital identity, you have internet of thing, IoT, all of these technologies are now talking to each other. And this is creating an unprecedented power to solve critical problems that we didn't have the tools before to solve. So in the cases of objects, uh, my company, and I was in the UN before, then I left, I created a company because I really wanted to solve the problem, not only talk about the problem. Um, we already secure 1.2 billion objects. So those are watches in Switzerland, and they are now traced with a microchip that you are putting inside the watches, those are wines, those are perfumes, that is food products, because the trustability of a product cannot be established if you don't have a digital identity. Then the digital identity, which is embedded into the product, like I'll basically say by a microchip, is also available in a blockchain ledger. So for you to understand, if you don't understand, or well, you are not being confronted to blockchain technology, the beauty of blockchain is that decentralized data. You don't have to have the data in one place. So if a digital identity of my object, let's say a watch of LVMH, is traced at the object level, it's also available. The digital twin of that product is also available on a ledger. And then that ledger is available to anyone to see. So nobody can stop you to access the ledger. So let's say that a watch has a chip and that chip is in the ledger. When a person walks into a customs, a uh, custom can detect that the product is fake or has been falsified because the identity of the product is not being embedded. So this is creating a, a, a very interesting proposition. 
it is a great advantage also for brands, and if brands do not cooperate in this, this will never happen, is that brands are also able now to know where their objects are and who owns those objects. The ownership of the object has a very big advantage for the brand because brands do not know their customers anymore. In our days, uh, many brands, with the exception maybe of LVMH that has a very strong digital strategy, they will need to go to somebody like Facebook or somebody like uh, Amazon to know who their clients are because the client is registered with Facebook and not the, uh, the, the, the platform. So that creates an advantage because not at the same time you are protecting your product, you are creating a key y KYC, know your customer uh, facility that allow brands to re-engage back again with customers. Now, then you have the uh, Libras of the world. I, I personally, you know, Libra is in Geneva. I am in Geneva. I am very much involved with the team there that they are trying to understand how Libra can expand out of Geneva. Libra has a good things and a bad thing. It has uh, an amazing thing, which is they are creating a digital uh, currency, which could become dominant because they have 2.5 billion uh, uh, active users. The other thing, if Libra do not apply the uh, financial regulation principles of KYC, it could also be used to uh, basically move money illegally on the internet. So putting KYC compliance in projects like Libra on cryptocurrency is, is, is a must to have. Otherwise, goods that they are, technologies that they are developed with the intention to do good end up by doing bad. I mean, one example is the dark web. The dark web now has moved one trillion uh, dollars economy. The, the dark web was originally um, designed by intelligence services and they want to enter into the underworld, under, underworld and, and see where bad things were happening there. It was actually absorbed, used and manipulated by the underworld to do uh, basically their own digital eco ecosystem. So um, the good news is a lot of technologies are there. The bad news is that we need uh, conferences like this an international multi-stakeholder uh, approach to use those uh, technologies in a way that satisfy regulatory requirements worldwide. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, so on uh, technology, some parts you're upbeat, some parts you're still uh, doubtful. Libra needs to be regulated in, a, in, a, in, the, in the right way. But before going to uh, Jean-François, maybe I come back to Laurent. What is your opinion? You went from 20 million in one year, now 21 million uh, uh, takedowns. Uh, do you think we are you're winning the battle, or is a mountain which, once you reach the top, there's another one even bigger? Alors, effectivement, uh, on est à 20 millions de takedown. Maintenant, notre objectif, c'est de passer à 20 millions de stay down. Uh, parce que, uh, aujourd'hui, évidemment, les annonces se remplacent les, les unes des autres. Je crois que Carlo, en parlant de l'aspect la, technique, c'est une aide, effectivement, très importante pour les titulaires de droit. Mais moi, je pense qu'il y a un niveau normatif, un niveau législatif sur lequel il faut vraiment qu'on puisse avancer. Euh, Aujourd'hui, évidemment, il faut qu'on arrive à une responsabilisation des grands acteurs de l'Internet. Parce que euh, du travail a été fait en matière de fiscalité, en matière de contenu haineux, en matière de contenu à caractère terroriste, et des discussions avancent chaque fois pour que ce type de contenu soit enlevé en amont par les géants de l'Internet et pas seulement après signalement. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, il faut, dans cette approche globale que j'appelle de mes voeux, arriver à une responsabilisation des géants de l'Internet sur l'ensemble, en réalité, des contenus illicites. C'est-à-dire, cessons de, faire, euh, de créer euh, des, 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 des micro-sujets suivant, en réalité, euh, la nature des contenus qui sont diffusés, et rentrons, finalement, dans une des préconisations qu'avait fait la Commission européenne, la dernière Commission européenne, euh, en mai 2018, c'est-à-dire en appeler à une responsabilisation sur l'ensemble des contenus illicites, c'est-à-dire ayons cette approche transversale. Aujourd'hui, nous avons tous cette euh, en train, en autorité publique euh, titulaire de droit. On a un ennemi commun qui sont euh, ces pirates, ces contrefacteurs, ces organisations criminelles. Et pourtant, nous répondons de manière trop morcelée. Donc cette approche transversale, cette approche globale doit aussi venir aujourd'hui sur Internet. Et j'espère que euh, euh, ces débats seront aussi l'occasion de faire avancer ce sujet de responsabilisation des grands géants de l'Internet. Parce que sans ce travail qu'ils doivent faire techniquement en amont et qu'ils ont les moyens de le faire, c'est-à-dire placer des instruments de filtrage pour filtrer la comp les contenus illicites, qu'il s'agisse de contrefaçon ou de contenus haineux ou de contenus à caractère terroriste. Et je pense qu'une bonne partie du sujet aura été réglée par cette implication plus forte de ces géants de l'Internet dans ce combat. Merci, Jean-François, pour la réglation.